Hi, you're joining us at the first bend at Alton Park Race Circuit, where the weather is making things very interesting. It's round five of the Thundersport GB Championship 2016. Welcome to Alton Park, the Monex Europe Thundersport GP1. Unfortunately, the sun is out, but it's raining. We're in for an interesting race here. Some big, big riders on the grid for GP1. Phil Crow, he's out there. And look who's about, number 99. Jeremy McWilliams here at Thundersport GB to try his luck out. There are some brilliant riders on offer here. Lee Williams there, number 94, leads the championship, having moved up as Formula 600 champion last year. His biggest challenger overall so far this season is Josh Day, number two, but he's got a handful here. Look at the amount of riders here on this grid, and away we go here. Dan ready to head into turn one, and it will be championship leader, Lee Williams, that gets the whole shot. Look out for Josh Day on the crank racing. Kawasaki, he is number two, yellow bike, he's just in fourth place. Jeremy McWilliams then, out there on that Aprilia. More on that in a moment. Phil Crow in third. Craig Neves has got off to a decent start. There's Michael Neves, number 33. Peter Brown, the Prime Factors Racing BMW. And the riders from first all the way down to 20th here have had race wins at Thundersport GB level. Here we are then on board of Lee Williams, and it is the experienced rider himself, Jeremy McWilliams, that goes for a look up the inside and Lee Williams shuts the door. Jeremy McWilliams, 52 years young, of course, former uh, 250cc, 500cc in MotoGP World Championship rider, a race winner at Grand Prix level, of course, winning in Assen in the 250 class in 2001 and on the podium on a few occasions as well. He handed it on a plate to Mr. Valentino Rossi on a couple of occasions. And he isn't done racing yet, is he? We've seen him out in a various Northwest races and Josh Day, this is a big moment for the championship. Phil Crow has to go straight on there, avoiding action. And Josh Day, who's been chasing Lee Williams down in this championship, has got a lot on his plate right now. And he will be really upset with that because he's been closing on Lee Williams at times, but that is really costly. Lee Williams, now he won't know what's just happened there. At the moment, he's got eyes only for Jeremy McWilliams, who's up ahead of him. And of course, if you're a rider at this level and a legend like Jezza comes past you, of course you're going to be fixated on it. But he will be informed, I'm sure, on his pit board in a moment that his nearest championship rival has gone down. So how long will he push for? In the commentary box with me here for this race is uh, Thundersport Sid. Well, Sid, a couple of points there. First of all, let's talk about Josh Day going down. Big moment there in the championship. Oh, unbelievable. Lost the front end. First lap. What a nightmare for them. They've had one or two tough uh, calls this year, for sure. One or two dramas. And, uh, and it certainly, um, well, Lee has now got a decision on his hands because uh, Jezza, as I like to call him, um, has got nothing to do with this championship. So, does he race like a racer wants to, or does he settle for 80 points? Well, there you can just see further back, 80 points. He's not going to get 80 points, Sid. You don't get a double-double in one no. race, mate. Blimey. Well, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Points. We've got. We'll, we'll bring an abacus into the commentary box, ready for race two. But uh, he'll get 40 points, Lee Williams, for staying in second place. And quickly on Jeremy McWilliams, it's brilliant to have him here at Thundersport. It's, of course, it's not his first time at Thundersport events. He's often uh, turning up to the odd round, of course, and uh, being a part of the Ian Newton and Myra Newton and in competition department. But he's out there on that Aprilia, and I understand he's going racing in the British Championship on that beast. Yeah, for sure, he definitely is, and uh, we wish him well on that. And uh, it's one of the reasons for being here, obviously, as well. They have to set this thing up on Pirelli's because he can only run Pirelli's. And this, the only thing this bike's ever gone out on is uh, Dunlops. So no moment there for Lee Williams. He thought about a look up the inside of Jeremy Williams. At what point does his head suddenly go click? 
I need to he's think here strong. Can you see him looking at his bit board there? God, he's not paying attention to it, is he? Look at this! Up the inside into Old Hall Corner. He may well know about it, but Williams has a look under his arm. He's got a fight on his hands here. It is uh, the master versus the apprentice in so many ways. Lee Williams, of course, who has come of age in the last couple of seasons, an ex-supermoto rider, came into Thundersport in the pre-national class, really lit it up, and now moving on to 1,000cc is really showing what he can do. There's Paul Charman just up ahead of Michael Neves, we saw number nine. Paul Charman, who at the moment in the Thundersport Sportsman points, is leader overall and is having a very nice season indeed, of course, Charman. Uh, he even got himself an outright race victory back at Boynton Park at the start of the season. He did, he did so well before. And uh, he's really loving the racing and all he wants to do is get on terms with the leaders. Uh, the, the leaders who, as to be said at the sharp end of this championship, are uh, the only ones who are running Michelin's. Uh, they've come on board into the paddock this year and they've begun to run away with it really. Uh, it's, I'm really surprised that there are not riders like herds of wildebeest flocking to the truck. And at Rockingham, indeed, Michelin will have their own truck in their paddock. So yeah, they'll be able to look out for that and go and chat to those guys and get all the technical advice they need. Mark Sykes there just making up a place and a rider just uh, fortunately having to use the escape road here. Uh, at Alton a moment ago we saw Josh Day stomping back towards the garages and he'll have to try and pick up the pieces ready for race two but this is a fascinating situation developing out front. Jeremy McWilliams, he'll want to bring this bike home in one piece, let's not forget. But so will um, Lee Williams out ahead. He's the championship leader. There's Craig Neve. Good race from Craig so far. He's up to third ahead of Phil Crow, former champion in the class. Dave Jackson, of course, another former supermoto rider that's trying his luck out on the road. And here's Paul Charman again. Paul Charman at the moment is up in the top eight, which is a really good job from him on that beautiful sounding Yamaha. Hey, here it just zipping past the start finish line. Here goes the move for the lead though. Lee Williams, oh, on the high-tech Kawasaki. Can he hold off? McWilliams, I'm not sure if he can. You know, on one hand, Sid, I've got to say that you expect to see someone with a Grand Prix history and, and such a legend fighting at the front of a race like this. But this is a 52-year-old man who hasn't been racing week in, week out. And let's be honest, OK, it's not British Championship this, but this GP1 field is mighty strong. And in these conditions, what an effort this is from oh, McWilliams. Oh, so but, you know, I mean, uh, he is the maestro, isn't he? And he... He's not finished yet. Uh, he, he wants to do it. That said, it would be some scalp for Lee Williams. I mean, this would be the first thing that he tells his mates in the morning if he gets the win here ahead of McWilliams. <laughs> He's got to beat him first. Uh, you know, but the, one of the things that I've noticed this year about Lee Williams is the mature head that he's uh, grown effectively, for want of another word. And he knows about the points. He wants this championship more than anything else. Yeah, that's, uh, that was Sid Lee uh, stating that uh, up until this season you didn't have a mature head. That was Sid, he not did. me. He was hot. <laughs> he was hot-headed. He was hot-headed. Certainly come of age, that is for sure. Uh, Lee Williams is doing a great job in this championship. Me for saying that. Overall. <laughs> Further back there you can see Kingsley Ruddy. Kingsley Ruddy, who uh, spent most of uh, last round at Candle Park punching um, his tank after a few uh, angry moments uh, off screen. I'm sure he won't thank me for bringing that one up again. Across the line now then, here we go. McWilliams leads it. Lee Williams, I think Sid, has suddenly decided, you know what, I am mature and I'll prove you right. Because 40 points here and not 80, as Sid mentioned earlier on, is a big haul uh, when you consider that Josh Day is out of the race. There is Kingsley Ruddy, just up ahead of Gary Hutchinson there. Red's True Barbecue Racing for uh, number 28 there, Gary Hutchinson. Unfortunately, we haven't quite got barbecue weather at this moment in time. This is 156 Dave Jackson. He's up in the top five. Matt Waldron is uh, fifth place at the moment. He's chasing down Phil Crow. And here you can see McWilliams just trying to thread his way through one or two bits of traffic down at his ease. Number 27 there is uh, the luge himself. Brian Fuge, and now he'll go past number 332.
Daniel Shaw from Baron Furness. Lee Williams trying to find his way through as well. Williams is there if things were to go wrong for McWilliams out front, but he certainly rolled it off a little. This is 92 then, Mark Sykes of Grimsby, then just behind him, number 33, bit of a front end wobble for Michael Neves, who's coming under a bit of a challenge there from Kingsley Ruddy. These guys at the moment, let's just see uh, where we are. We're in the top, just outside the top 10 at present. But Williams it is with the outright race lead, but Lee Williams here, well, he came into this round with a 15 point lead over Josh Day and with a chequered flag out now he would uh, extend that to a 55 point lead going into the second race which I should just point out is not double points in GP1 and the Sportsman Elite 600 Championships it is a gold and silver race format so uh, there's double points on offer here in this race that's why Josh Day would have been so disappointed Absolutely. to have gone out early on but it, they'll come back out of the corner fighting, you know. Him and his team, Crank Racing, they're very focused as well. And they'll, they'll pick themselves up and come out punching. Jab, move, jab, move. And that's what they do. And uh, I tell you what, I just noticed that. I mean, Craig Neve's doing very well, you know. He's not that far behind these two. No, Craig Neve, of course, not always able to attend every single round, but when he's here, He's always somewhere near that sharp end. Not seen him probably on the top step as many times as he would like. And he uh, used to make the odd appearance in the 600 class. He used to be really difficult to stop. And he's been up in the top three or four a number of times in GP1. He has been on the top step. He would love to get back up there again as McWilliams has uh, a look over his shoulder to see how close Lee Williams is at this stage. Here's Phil Crow then. Number 71, Market Raisins, Phil Crow. Uh, I suppose a legend in his own right in Thundersport GB paddock terms because he's been in uh, Thundersport since 2009 and there's never been a time when you haven't seen Phil Crow battling for a GP1 race win. Uh, Phil's been around forever it seems like but uh, obviously big fella, uh, fantastic bloke, fantastic rider. Um, I'm pleased to say, last lap flag as you can see, um, I'm pleased to say uh, he helps out a lot of young riders and gives advice. He's very, very good suspension and setup. So he's a fabulous bloke to have around. And I must confess that uh, it really made me smile yesterday when he popped in that pole lap right at the end. <laughs> yeah, brilliant stuff from Phil. He's, he's so super aggressive. He's good in any conditions. And like you say, he helps out some of the younger riders as well. Of course, he spends a lot of time focusing on uh, his TT efforts these days and some racing on the roads, but when he does come to play at short circuits, more often than not, it's with Thundersport GB and uh, GP1 grid doesn't quite look the same whenever he's not on it. This has been a brilliant performance though. It may well be a one-off appearance for Jeremy McWilliams. He's more than welcome to come racing any time again, but he's not had it all his own way. In the early stages of this, Lee Williams put up a real fight, but Lee has got championships to worry about. And Jeremy McWilliams here has had some perfect track time on board that Aprilia RSV4. And let's be honest, it's not the easiest bike in the world to just jump on and get going straight away. But McWilliams is certainly proving that uh, his experience is going to pay off. There's Mike, uh, Michael Neves further back, number 33. Just trying to find a way past in the latter stages here of Gary Hutchinson for 11th place. Oh dear. Well, we mentioned him a, lot, well, a while ago. Phil Crow barging through the barriers down there uh, as he goes straight on. He doesn't care what's in his way. He's going through it. It could be a brick wall down there and Phil Crow would burst his way through. But unfortunately for Phil, he's going to lose a few places as a result of that. Brilliant stuff though. Great to have him here. Jeremy McWilliams wins here and goes across the line to take the glory and a trophy for his efforts but the all-important man in second place Lee Williams great job from him clever ride from him he'll take 40 points and no matter what happens in race two he will leave here championship leader once more Neve was in a solid third as Sid mentioned earlier Dave Jackson fourth Matt Waldron in fifth place and there you see thumbs up from the man himself McWilliams on the top step not for the first probably not for the last Paul Charman winner in the sportsman as well third place mate but 
what a tough race. I mean, what a way to go. Yeah, it's been it's been difficult, you know, all, all weekend. The weather conditions, tyres in and out. Luckily, we managed to get the wet bike, something light last night, and when it turned last minute, we could just jump on that today, you know. So, yeah, chuffed a bit to get back on the podium after obviously missing Cadwell, been at the TT and uh, not having a very good turnout at Snetterton. So, uh, so, yeah, good, happy. And some people to thank. Yeah, loads of people, you know, Dave Beeson, uh, Dave McKenzie at Cormac, Derek Umberston. It's like to say a massive uh, shout out to Lee McKenzie as well. Um, you know, I wouldn't have been doing a lot of the stuff I've been doing this year if it hadn't been for Lee. So, uh, cheers, Lee. Excellent. Well done, Craig. Lee, such a tough call. And I know it's been a tough weekend for you so far, but uh, what a brilliant way uh, to finish this race with double points. Yeah, uh, we run out of time yesterday. Um, Qualifying was the same as that race, wet in the beginning, dry in the end, but it was the same for everyone. Um, no, the, the idea of that one was, was just to stay on two wheels, finish and get points. And, you know, I, I chased Jeremy, I passed him and then he passed me back and I had, I just, I was spinning up everywhere and had nothing for him. So um, it was just, no, nah, relax, chill, get the points and go on with, with 40 extra points today. So Well, obviously you knew that Jezza didn't have anything... Uh to worry about in the championship but have you got some people to thank i'm sure you have um yeah just want to thank phil from high tech coatings um you know without phil it riding last year this year wouldn't be wouldn't have been able to do um my dad for all his effort he put in my girlfriend she she puts effort in my sister can't thank her enough um you know pipe works ancient cycle motor training high five rock oil um city showy majestic engineering just everyone that that's put in michelin can't thank Mitchell enough, you know, the tyres that they've given me and, and what they're doing for me and Gareth from Reactive Suspension working alongside us, it's it's a it's a big help and we couldn't have do it without them, so thank you. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't wait for race two now. Yeah, I just hope it's dry so we can have some proper fun. <laughs> Jeremy, fantastic to see you here at uh, Thundersport GB and what a race to win it straight out of the box. <laughs> but what a tough way to do it. It's been a tough weekend, you know, really we've had more wet time obviously than dry time, so it's it's been working well, uh, you know, the Aprilia has been just super in the wet. Need a little bit more dry time and uh, we might get that this afternoon, but uh, yeah, great, just have to thank EHA Racing and In Competition and Aprilia UK for, for giving me this chance, you know, the bike's working well. Just need a little bit more time, but uh, it's superb obviously in the wet. I heard a little... <laughs> a little uh Sparrow told me that you put on your scrutineering card over 65 where I asked, <laughs> where I asked your age. <laughs> I, thought I was wondering how long it would take you to catch on. That said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Well, I, I, get, I, I, get, I get a hard time from my age, so it's, it's nice to come here. And, uh, you know, Ed Allen uh, made the trip over this morning, so it's nice to give him something back here, you know, regardless of age. I think you're, it's only a number, isn't it? You know, I'm, I'm happy to be uh, still competing at, at this level. These, these guys are really fast, I have to say, you know. Looking at their pace in the in the dry, you know, they could run at any championship at any level. Excellent. Great to see you. I can't wait for race two. <laughs> I would prefer if it was over and we were on our way. <laughs> well, fantastic win in the Freshman Cup and really tough conditions. And as you said uh, the last round, you are catching the front boys. Yeah, we, like I say, we, we're getting closer and closer, but I didn't do myself any favours yesterday with a complete nightmare of uh, qualifying, qualifying 31st. So... That was our work, just trying to keep smooth and just trying to pick my way through, which it did. I'm just so relieved we could come through because I didn't think we were going to do because the field is so packed with eight really, really good riders. So I'm just, like I say, over the moon. It's absolutely brilliant. So let's see what we can do in race two. Hopefully the weather will pick up a bit and we'll, we'll have a dry race. I'll behave itself, yeah. Have you got, have you got a shout out for anyone? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Dunstock Track Farm, Accrington Auto Bodies, uh, Phil Seaton at Seaton Tune In, uh, my cousin Laura Moore, who comes to support me every every race meeting. So I've got to say a big thank you to her to coming and helping out. Uh, Jason and JT Motorcycles, uh, my mum and dad and my wife Kayla. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Can Jeremy get himself on the top step? Can Josh Day recover? Well, we'll find out in a moment. Race two up next.
Race two in the Monarchs Europe Thundersport GP1 class. Jeremy McWilliams, race winner earlier on. Number 99 lines up on second place on the grid. Phil Crow on pole. Lee Williams, of course, leads the championship. Phil Crow, he's feeling hungry ahead of this next race. There's the race winner from earlier. It's dried up a bit in places, but still some aggressive clouds overhead. There's Lee Wilson. He's up there uh, with the number 80 on, and that's in memory of uh, Adam Boyle, because we should just point out that this race isn't just a normal GP1 race, it is the Adam Boyle Trophy race for 2016. Adam Boyle who's tragically lost his life a few years back now, and there's been a race here at Alton Park, his local circuit, in his memory ever since, and it has been fiercely contested. Uh, previous winners, uh, Kyle Wilkes, John Ingram and Billy Meller the most recent winner. Jeremy McWilliams it is that has the lead though from Lee Williams and Josh Day. Josh Day number two has to finish this race. It's as simple as that. He needs to try and get himself uh, some points and salvage something back in this championship. And there is his nearest rival just up ahead of him on circuit, Lee Williams. Uh, Josh Day didn't make it much past the first lap last time around. There's a gap there for him though. Lee Williams just leaving the door open and Josh Day says thank you very much and moves into second place but Lee Williams gets him on the cut back again. He's going to have to work for this one. These boys charging down on Jeremy McWilliams once more who leads. There's Phil Crow. He uh, was rubbing his belly on the grid and he'll be rubbing his hands together here at the site of first place because he's not far away after a good solid start. Number 71 there on the BMW. Uh, a bit further back here, who can we spot? We've got... Uh, Number 85 is Jody Lees. Jody, of course, who's been in a few rounds now so far this year. He's out there on a beautiful, uh, beautiful Yamaha R1, a former 600 championship contender with Thunder Sport and a British championship rider. Lee Williams here doing everything possible on that high-tech Kawasaki to try and fend off his championship rival, the crank racing number two there of Josh Day. Brilliant onboard shots here around. The most scary part to the circuit, and Jeremy McWilliams has just lost a couple of places in one. I don't know if he missed a gear or something, but he lost a lot of momentum there. He drops down to third place, and these two will continue now to fight, but at the front of the race, over Deer's Leap, across the line. Brilliant on board to how scary sometimes this old park circuit can be, and up the inside for Josh Day. Brilliant move from him. This is a close one. There is number four, Craig Neve is in contention here. He can smell the race leaders as they go down into Cascades. Josh Day it is with the lead. Sid's with me here in the commentary box and well, Sid, just like Mystic Sid earlier on in that first race, you said Josh Day would come back fighting and you weren't wrong. He is at it here. Absolutely scintillating this is. Yeah, I knew they would come out. I know you laugh at me, but uh, they always do come out fighting. They, they're on it, and uh, but what does Lee do now? He knows, he knows only too well that Josh is upset. The red mist is down. He's going to want to win this. Does Lee go for the win, or does he settle for another second? But 40 points, not 80, 40. Well, it isn't 40 in this one either, so you're wrong again, because <laughs> this is a silver race, and so he gets 20 points. Oh, yeah, well... <laughs> well Sid might have to go back to get some math lessons uh, yeah, when he returns to East Anglia <laughs> later this evening. Come, come on, you're right, but, <laughs> but don't worry, folks, I'll keep you up to date with the points. Just oh, don't ask you. Sid. <laughs> well, further back here, the battle's going all the way through the field in the sportsman class. Paul Charman and Matt Stevenson are battling it out, but look at this tussle at the front. Josh Day and Lee Williams on board with Williams here in second place. I think that, come back to your point, Sid, Lee Williams will most likely fight for a few laps, see what he's got in the tank, and just like that he goes past Josh Day, but as the race goes on, he will not want to risk, it will get more and more risky as this race goes on, and second place for 20 points and 60 from the day, when Josh might only pick up 25, is a massive, massive bonus for Lee Williams, who would have chopped your arm off if you'd have offered him that at the start of the weekend. Regardless as to whether or not he comes out as race winner overall, wow! Josh Day there flew past Lee Williams like a rocket as they make their way out of Cascades into Island Bend and now through Shell Oils. What a championship we have on our hands here. Thundersport GP1 at the start of the season, we knew that Josh Day would be there. We thought that a few others would be up there fighting as well. Lee Williams, well, we had him up there in contention, but perhaps not quite as strong as he has actually turned out to be. 
Josh Day and Lee Williams are going to go at this all season long. And of course, you can join us every step of the way at thundersportgb.com. This is Jeremy McWilliams then. He's just in third place. He can't keep up with these boys in the front at the moment. He's got Phil Crow for company. Well, it's like, it's a brave move there for, for Jeremy when you think about it. He's come to Thundersport GB. You've got a couple of youngsters there baying for the lead all the time. It's a really tough championship. And he's got like everything to lose and nothing to win apart from his like, reputation that he could lose. I mean, he is a vastly experienced rider. Um, so I think that he's to win that. To, oh, look at this. This is so close. I, yeah, I think that uh, for him to win that first race was actually lovely for him because that uh, must have set his mind at rest. But uh, I don't think he's going to win this one. Well, not by the looks of it anyway. These two are away like scolded cats. I, um, you'll probably know better than me, Sid, as they kick up a bit of dust there about this, these guys' relationships off circuit. But they don't look like a couple that are going to be sending each other Christmas cards at the end of this season. Lee Williams here at the moment is still got plenty of fight left in this race. Josh Day, you just get the feeling, despite the fact that Josh Day has to finish, he'll do anything to win this race and finish ahead of Lee Williams. As he goes underneath him again there into Ireland. Ben, this, of course, as I mentioned at the start, this is the Adam Boyle Trophy, so there's still GP1 points on offer, but this is for the Adam Boyle Trophy as well. Of course, uh, the Adam's parents, Sean and Yvonne, who are allowing Thundersport for, for this award to be put on once more, they'll be watching close hand, of course, uh, uh, Sean especially loves his racing. He'll be enjoying this battle in his son's memory, that's for sure. And not to forget that uh, Adam was uh, probably Lee's best mate. So he would love to win this for Adam, it has to be said. Uh, but it, yeah, I mean, they're a couple of gladiators really, aren't they? Modern day gladiators. Uh, and I'm not saying they're gonna get married on the next podium, but they've got a lot of respect for each other and they get, they get on okay now. They're just coming up to put a lap on the, the luge there. Brian Fuge, number 27, moving out of the way. Josh Day it is with the advantage as they head around Lodge Corner and come over Deer's Leap once more. Lee Williams in the slipstream again, go across the line. Look at the advantage they have there. Then it's McWilliams and Neve. Phil Crow dropped back a place. He's back into fifth now. Craig Neve looking for another podium to back up his race one podium. 25 points on offer for the win here in this race. And Josh Day needs it. He really needs it to stay in contention. There's 75 available at each round in GP1s. And of course, there's four rounds left after this. We go to Rockingham next up. Then it's over, of course, to Northwest Wales and Anglesey before we returning back into the heart of uh, the East Midlands to Donington Park and then the finale at Cadwell. But at the moment here in uh, Chestershire, we are in Holter Park. We are watching the brilliant GP1 Championship racing unfold. Further back there is number five, a former champion at Thundersport GP, that is uh, Curtis Rothwell. There is Paul Charman, who still has the advantage in the sportsman class. There's Dave Brook. Nice to see Dave out there. Uh, Dave currently just up ahead of Mark Sykes. These guys just inside the top 10 overall. There's the, ooh, Lee Williams' leg hanging off the bike there as they come around Druids as he tries to get himself back into this race. They go down into Lodge Corner. Williams thought about a look around the outside and another lap goes by. Brilliant stuff here in the GP1 class. Bang, bang, across the line they go. Uh, here I am complaining about Sid's maths. Well, uh, I'm going to have to go back to school as well. I think I just said Chestershire. There's no such place. Cheshire, of course. It's where we are here at Holton Park. I'll do the English, you do the maths. Okay, deal. Uh, here's number 21. That's uh, Chris Barnes from Preston. Chris, a regular in the Thundersport paddock. And uh, you can see Dave Jackson up ahead of Jody Lees. And then it's Lee Wilson, number 80 for this round, and 21 again, Barnes. Out front, how much fight has Lee Williams got left? His bike is moving around quite a lot here. The last couple of laps especially, as he's trying to find a way past Josh Day. Oh, they've got cramped up there as they just get caught up with one of the tail enders. And that might have just given Lee Williams another sniff at this. Here they go down into his chicane. 
Still no change there. There has been a change for third, though. Craig Neve. Great job done by him. He moves up ahead of Jeremy McWilliamson. McWilliams at the moment off the podium for now. McWilliams, uh, McWilliams probably hoping for a few spots of rain here in the closing stages of this one. As you see, Brooke and Sykes just go past themselves again. Then here's Michael Neves. He's in 10th place, Michael Neves. And it's Curtis Rothwell, number five. Rory Parker, number 90. Then Paul Charman, number nine, leading in the sportsman class. Just behind him is 164, Matt Stevenson. So those two fat fighting it out for sportsman glory. Here we go then. Across the line, last lap flag out. What will Lee Williams do here? His bike is making shapes as we come to the closing stages of this. And that gap, Sid, looks a little too big now for Lee Williams. I think he'll still push a bit, but Josh Day looks to have this one sorted. Well, we'll see, but I, this is where it's going to tell. I mean, like, will he back off? I mean, Lee will not want to dump this because he can go home. Now I've got my math sorted out with an extra 60 points in the bag. Unbelievable um, lead that will give him. And, uh, but a great comeback for Josh. Absolutely brilliant. Great fight I love to see between Craig and Jeremy. This is such good racing these days. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And it is great to see Josh Day fighting back at the front again because we want this championship as neutrals to go all the way down to the final round. Lee Williams looks like he's uh, caught between a rock and a hard place at the moment as to whether to continue to push or settle. Of course, if Josh makes a mistake, he could be there to pick up the pieces. But he doesn't, as you say, want to push it too far because the two second places he'll pick up here at his home circuit will be crucial for the championship, even if he isn't able to win that beloved Adam Boyle trophy. The chequered flag is waiting. Here is Rory Parker further back with Paul Charman still following. Paul Charman at the moment in 14th place in this race overall and is on his way to a sportsman victory and 25 points in that class. But with the chequered flag waving, Josh Day, what a recovery it has been. But the crank racing Kawasaki rider after such disappointment earlier on, he takes the win here in race two, ahead of Lee Williams. Williams there with second then, and look how much it means there to Josh Day. He'll be over the moon with that, and he'll be just as fired up and pumped up when we get out to Rockingham next time out. Craig Neve there uh, finishes in third. Solid result for him ahead of Jeremy McWilliams. Then it's Phil Crow in fifth and Jody Lee's six. Top three there, Adam Boyle trophy in the right hand there of Josh Day. He wins ahead of Lee Williams to Craig Neve and in the sportsman, Charman, Stevenson and Gary Woodward. In the championship, I believe it is 50 points. It is, the maths are okay still. It's 50 point lead for Williams ahead of Josh Day with a lot still to play for. Craig Neve up to third overall ahead of Dave Jackson and Michael Neve further back. Paul Charman it is that leads in the sportsman class still ahead of Matt Stevenson with Michael Tustin in third following Gary Hutchinson, Sonny Martin and Ash Stone. Craig, well it's not been a bad weekend. I mean pretty good uh, haul of points and of course as you know I mean a lot of competition here. Yeah, some good lads here, you know, the, the level's so, so high, and I was, I was looking at the times from Cadwell and the boys absolutely flying, but again, it's uh, Josh Day and Lee Williams that takes some stopping, you know, fair play to the boys, you know, they're riding really well, I couldn't have pushed anymore, you know, so tap my hats off to uh, to the pair of the lads, and it's a pleasure to be involved in the Adam Boyle race, you know, Adam's someone I knew and, and raced with uh, a couple of years ago in, in British Superstock, so it's a pleasure. And you beat Jeremy McWilliams. That's something to put on your CV. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, what do they say? You know, he was rubbing shoulders with Rossi on here a couple, of, you know, a few years ago. But uh, yeah, I'd like to thank all the boys. You know, uh, Eddie at Ferncroft, Dave McKenzie, uh, Dave Beeson, um, and my dad, Rich Beercroft and, and Woolwich. Thanks very much. Lee, second place. Um, obviously, this is a lot. Of, there's a lot about points, um, but it looked hot and hard work out there. Yeah, it was uh, it was good. The, we got a gremlin running around the bike, and um, he tampered us for this weekend. But you know, no excuses. Josh won, and that was it. But now it would have been nice to to win for Adam. You know, Adam was my one of my best mates. He got me into road racing, and you know, I've been trying for four years now to try and win that trophy for Adam. So I can say Adam, I, I actually won it four years on. But you know, we'll come back next year stronger, and uh, we'll have another go next year. Josh, winner of what looked like an extremely tiring race and indeed, well, an up and down weekend for you, to say the least. 
Yeah, obviously we crashed earlier, didn't we, in a double points race. And I was just trying to catch him a bit too quick on the first lap. Went down and I hurt my shoulder quite bad, if I'm honest. I can hardly lift it up. Um, you guys only know that now, though. But uh, <laughs> but no, it was all right. We uh, we, we got there. Um, I feel I thought Lee was going to go with it. Obviously, I went on the warm-up lap and I could hardly break. It was that much pain in my arm. But I managed to just start braking a bit earlier, let off and carry a bit more speed through the corners. But it was like riding a straight banana around there. It was a, uh, it was a bit mental, really. Um, just thanks to all the guys getting the bike back together again after another crash. So yeah, and he's going to rest his arm now and chill out. Absolutely knackered. <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> lovely. Um, of course, not only is it a championship race, but it's the Adam Boyle Trophy. I mean, Adam Boyle, who was a great friend of. Uh, Thundersport GB, who sadly lost his life on the road the day after the uh, event here at Alton Park in 2012. So you must be made up to take that. Yeah, it's good. Obviously, I feel bad for Lee because it was like one of his good mates and that. But um, it's always nice to do something, get your name on another trophy and pay a bit of respect to the lost life there. So, no, it's it's been a good end to a bad weekend as such. Um, it's a shame it went the other way around and we could have dealt with that a bit better. But... Yeah, don't know what to say really, just I'm aching. <laughs> GP1 battle set to continue. Make sure you join us for the next chapter. We'll be at Rockingham next month. <laughs>